Hi, I'm Alejandro Astinieto, Associate Product Line Manager with Tempo Communications. In this video, I'll be introducing the 521E wire and valve locator, an upgrade to the 521A. And I'll be going through the 521E's features and functions, as well as step-by-step -step instructions for locating wires, valves, and faults. Inside the 521E-C carrying case, we have the removable 521E-T transmitter with red and black leads, the 521E-R receiver, the HS-1 headset, the ground stake, and the instruction manual. On the 521E-T transmitter, we have the leads, on-off button, output level buttons, display screen, and battery compartment. The display shows the output level, signal meter, and a low battery indicator that lights when battery level is low. When the low battery indicator is lit on the transmitter, the tone output will also change to a slower cadence, warning you remotely that your transmitter batteries are low. On the 521E-R receiver, we have the display, on-off button, battery level button, sensitivity wheel, speaker, headphone jack, battery compartment, and the antenna pole. The display shows the signal level, a 45 degree angle indicator, null icon, and low battery indicator. Holding the battery level button will switch the display from signal level to receiver battery level. The low battery indicator lights up when the receiver batteries are low. The 45 degree angle indicator will light up brighter the closer you hold the receiver to a 45 degree angle. This will be important for accurate depth measurements. The null icon will remain lit at all times as a reminder that the 521E uses a null antenna. Installing the batteries. The transmitter requires six D cell batteries. When installing batteries in the transmitter, make sure the leads are not connected to anything. To open the battery compartment, loosen the two thumb screws and pull. Place three batteries in each slot, observing the polarity indications. Replace the battery cover and secure the thumb screws. The receiver requires four AA cell batteries. To open the battery compartment, remove the two screws on the underside of the handle, remove the cover, pull out the battery holder, and install two batteries on each side, observing the polarity indications. Reinsert the battery holder, replace the battery cover, and tighten the screws. Hooking up to a wire. Begin with the transmitter turned off. To trace a valve wire and locate a valve, first disconnect the valve wire from the controller and then hook the red lead from the transmitter to the valve wire. Disconnecting the common wire from the controller is recommended. Connect the black lead to a ground stake, ideally two to three feet off to the side of the wire path where the wire enters the ground. If the controller is indoors, use a length of wire to connect the transmitter lead to the ground stake outside where the valve wires exit the building. Using a common ground, like the ground of an outlet, will cause the signal to bleed off in unwanted directions. Settings on the transmitter and receiver. Turn on the transmitter and select a power level using the up and down arrows such that the output meter is mid-level. A mid-level output ensures the signal is hot enough for the receiver, but limits the amount of unwanted signal bleed to other nearby conductors and saves battery life. If the output meter is at a low reading, even at the highest output setting, there might not be enough ground contact with a black lead and ground stake. Make sure the ground stake is driven into the ground as much as possible and the black lead is making good contact with the ground stake. In dry conditions, using water, ideally salt water, to wet the ground around the ground stake will improve its conductivity with the ground. Turn on the receiver, set the sensitivity wheel to halfway, and point the receiver pole at the transmitter. The receiver display screen should indicate a high reading and a pulsing tone should be audible through the receiver speaker or optional headset if it is plugged in. Sweep around the transmitter. Walk to a distance of at least 15 to 20 feet from the transmitter off the wire path and with the tip of the receiver pole pointed straight down at the ground, sweep around the transmitter in an arc with a consistent distance from the transmitter. Tone should grow stronger towards the wire being located until it quickly gives way to a distinct null or cancellation in tone. The null is what indicates that the receiver is pointing straight at the buried valve wire. 
continuing along the arc will result in a strong tone once again coming through the receiver until it eventually fades as you continue away from the wire path. Tracing the wire path. Return to the point of the arc where the null was found, wave the wand left and right, and follow between the two peaks in tone to either side of the null to give you an indication of the direction of the wire path and advance in the direction away from the transmitter. Determining depth. To determine the depth of the wire, begin by marking the ground directly over the path. To do this accurately, narrow in on the null, making sure the receiver pole is exactly vertical and nearly touching the ground. Next, keeping the pole tip near the ground, lean the receiver pole 45 degrees to either side of the wire path. Verify the 45 degree angle with the indicator on the receiver's display. Maintaining the 45 degree angle, pull the receiver away from the wire path in the direction that it is leaning until a null is detected once again. Mark this second location on the ground where the receiver is pointing. The distance between these two marks is equal to the depth of the wire. Locating a valve. Continue following the wire path towards the valve. When you pass over the valve, the null will give way to a hot spot or tone bloom of magnified signal. The signal will be highly concentrated when directly over the valve solenoid, a much stronger response than the peaks to either side of the null along the wire path. So it is important to lower the sensitivity on the receiver to leave headroom for a valve. The signal can jump to other wires and valves, so if there are multiple valves giving off a tone, reduce the sensitivity of the receiver all the way down and touch the tip of the receiver directly to each solenoid. The valve directly connected to the transmitter will give a noticeably louder tone. This difference will be magnified if you go back and disconnect the black lead of the transmitter from the ground stake and connect it instead to the common wire. Using the common wire instead of a ground stake will diminish signal along the wire path, however, making wire tracing more difficult. Locating faults. To pinpoint a fault in a wire, you'll need to pay extra attention to the consistency of the null and the amount of tone to either side of the null especially if the fault is minor. A complete break in a buried wire will cause a disappearance of tone altogether past the fault. If there is a minor fault in the wire's insulation or some other minor ground fault, the tone alongside the wire may continue past the fault, but it will be slightly weaker. The bigger the ground fault, the more noticeable these changes in tone characteristics will be. If there is a bad splice in a valve box, such that there is no continuity to the valve, the tone will gradually fade as you approach the valve box potentially fading out well before it is reached. This is because the signal has no path to ground to complete a circuit back to the ground stake at the transmitter. If the signal fades out in this manner, you should assume that the valve box you are looking for is at least several yards past the point where the signal was lost. For repair or technical support, please visit our website, tempocom.com, or call 1-800-642-2155.